So, morning everyone. Um, pleased to welcome Emily van der Venter today from Public Hello. Health. Um, alongside myself, Gemma Stainthorpe from Public Health Warwickshire. I'm just going to run through some of the key indicators uh, that we've set out across the county um, when considering the running of events and festivals. So we've been doing a weekly vlog on this. Myself and Jonathan Toy have been doing it, but Jonathan's not available this week, so Emily's kindly stepped in. So I've just popped the key indicators up just so we've got a general overview of what we're looking at. Um, which we'll go through. So obviously county incidents and direction of travel, we're looking to be cases being 50 per 100,000 population and, and on the decrease. And then local incidents are looking around 75 per 100,000. Um, we always touch on the rate in over 60s, just have a look at the most at risk groups. Um, we'll have a quick discussion around hospital capacity across the county. And then I will touch on some vaccination figures, the latest ones, and then we'll have a quick discussion about um, any new variants that that require um, having a discussion around. So if I just stop sharing my screen, I'll come back to presenting. There we go. Thanks, Gemma. No worries. Right, I'm probably going to share another screen now, so I'll just um, get that up. But I just want to talk through then. Let's have a look. The first indicator. So, the rolling rates per 100,000 population. Um, so, as we can see here, um, I think there's been there's been a little bit of a change since the last time um, we did this vlog. So, let's just have a look at that. So, we've got the rolling rates per 100,000 population, and then each colour represents the different district and boroughs. Um, so, they're all identified across the top here. And then the blue dotted line is the Warwickshire average. So as we can see, there has been an increase over the last sort of week or so. So if I just try and get the most, there we go. So where we are at the moment, um, so Warwickshire is coming in at an average of around so 25.6 per 100,000 population. Obviously, our, our sort of key aim um, is 50 and under. Um, but we can see an increase here because it was, you know, it was down sort of at around 11 per 100,000 population. And now we're up to, um, oh, we're actually up to sort of 27 there. So um, just looking at some of the district and boroughs, we've had increases in all, um, looking at these, some sort of more dramatic ones, perhaps in Nuneaton and Bedworth, um, perhaps associated with the increase in surge testing there. So we are seeing numbers rising at the moment. Um, and we'll touch on a little bit about why. Um, following this. So my colleague Emily is going to share the 60 and over charts. Yeah, so just to say for over 60s, I won't share the table I've got, actually it's got some small numbers on it, so I won't share my screen, but just to say we are seeing increases in the over 60 rates. It's still relatively small numbers, so across the whole of the county in the last seven days we've had 11 confirmed cases in over 60s, but Obviously, keeping a close eye on this, given that we are starting to see slight increases despite the good level of vaccinations that we've seen. So, yeah, it's one one to watch as we go forward, really. At the moment, those rates are highest in rugby at 15 per 100,000 in the last week. Um, the other areas are below 10, um, but seem to be creeping up slightly. Thanks, Emily. Um I think it'd be a good sort of point to perhaps touch on hospital capacity then, um, thinking around um, the increase. Yeah, of course. So we had, did have a, a, a short period where we didn't have anybody in hospital locally uh, with COVID, confirmed COVID. We have seen a small increase in hospital admissions. Again, still relatively small numbers and mostly it's, it's under 10 and mostly people are not being admitted to intensive care units um, on the whole. So it, it does seem to be young, slightly younger age groups that are being admitted now, but with less severe symptoms, but nonetheless, you know, bad enough to need a hospital admission, even if it's only for a day. So again, watching that one really carefully. And, and some of that does seem to be related to the Delta variant that we're now seeing across the UK. Brilliant. Thanks, Emily. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about the variant in a minute. But before we do, I will share another graph with you relating to vaccination uptake. Um, so hopefully you can see that okay. Um, so obviously we know our main 
our main weapon of defence against, especially against the Delta variant that we'll speak about, um, is vaccination and in particular two doses of vaccination. So we can see here, um, these are the percentage of uptakes of dose one in blue and dose um, two in pink. So if you just look down the right hand side of these charts, it's got the age categories on the left and then the percentage of vaccination uptake. So just sort of looking at our obviously our highest risk age categories have got really good coverage. Um, and then we're sort of looking down at the 50 to 59s. Um, so they've had around 90% um, dose one and 77% dose two. Um, I've just sort of made a note and had a quick discussion with Emily that these um, this particular age group seems quite stationary and quite stable in in the percentage um, of uptake of vaccination so really it's you know ever so important to encourage people within that group to have their first and certainly have their second um, afterwards as well because we're just looking about 77 percent with dose two so only just over three quarters of the 50 to 59s would expect them to sort of be well on their way um, through mm -hmm. their second doses now. So, yeah. and as you say, Gemma, that second dose is really important in terms of protection against the Delta variant, isn't it? So, we know it does look like the AstraZeneca and the Pfizer vaccine are just slightly less effective against the Delta variant, but still a reasonable level of protection, but really is about having the, the two doses. So don't want people to think if, if they haven't gone for their first dose yes, that, yet that they've missed out, you can still go ahead and book that one. And then, as you say, please don't, do go forward for the second dose. If people are feeling concerns about um, kind of blood clot risks or side effects from the AstraZeneca vaccine, I'd like to really reassure people that, you know, if you've had one dose and you were fine, you, you will be fine from the second dose. Um, and again, the, those risks are really very small compared to obviously the impacts of a COVID infection itself. Absolutely. Thanks, Emily. Um, I wondered if you would mind um, just talking us through the variant. So the variants change name, obviously, from the Indian variant to the Delta variant. So it might just be worth having a discussion around the general kind of situation with regards to that variant locally. Um, yeah, of course. Nationally as well. Of course. So obviously we, we had our first kind of cluster of it identified with Unne within Nuneaton. Um, so we've been doing that surge testing, which came to an end this weekend. And we have picked up um, a number of cases from that. So close to 50 um, confirmed cases, about half of which we know are the Delta variant. Um, so we want to firstly give our thanks to workplaces and community members in the area that have complied with that testing. Really amazing number of tests that have been um, given out and taken. So uh, we're now in a position that the Delta variant is the dominant strain across the country. Um, so it's always difficult when you kind of move from having reacted very strongly to a new variant doing the surge testing to actually having to start to deal with it as, as the kind of business as usual, if you like. Um, but it does mean that obviously we've, we're seeing government just deciding at the moment around whether there might be an extension to the 21st lifting of restrictions. And we're, we'll find out on Monday if that will be the case. But certainly locally, we know we are seeing cases um, it is more transmissible, uh, more airborne. So the, the messages around hands, face, face still remain um, and particularly um, doing things outdoors wherever you can. So, you know, we, we still want to enable events and activities to take place, but um, we would be looking for you to, you know, really make sure you're, you're putting all those COVID secure measures in place. If it's anything indoors, you know, thinking about capacity and ventilation, outdoors is safer. Uh, but but it, we never really eliminate the risk. So it is still about making sure you've got those controls and things like having COVID marshals in place to remind people of that distancing um, is really key. So, um, yeah, I think that's helpful. I think um, we We've been having a lot of meetings and discussions with event organisers at the moment and um, just generally around um, what might happen, because obviously a lot rests on the national decision, um, which, as you say, won't come out until Monday. And a lot of event organisers are just really bearing that in mind and, and almost planning for their events to take place as if it was still in sort of stage three um, mm -hmm. of lockdown easing, which has been really, you know, a sensible approach for now. Um, so that comes towards the end of our vlog but just to say so we normally do a quick roundup at the end just to say you know if you are holding event if you were holding an event this week or next week um as emily sort of mentioned it's it's 
more outside the better um, and those really really important kind of mitigation so ventilation encouraging LFTs etc um, but events would be going ahead this week or next um, but just to you know really make sure that they're complying especially with stage three um, of lockdown at the moment. Absolutely and I suppose just on that vaccination point as well you know if you are hosting an event for the younger age groups that um, are less likely to have been vaccinated yet yeah, just to bear that in mind so whilst you know the, the severity of illness amongst younger groups can be less that increased risk of transmission increases the risk of any other new variants or mutations occurring so we still need to try and um, suppress that and yeah do everything as safely as possible no matter what age group you're serving. Brilliant. Thanks, Emily. So I think that's all from us. I'll leave it there. Thank you. Cheers all.